today I'm going to read to you a story. It's a story taken from this book, uh, All Creation Waits by Gail Boss. And some of you will be familiar with it because you came along to our online Advent course. You might be saying, well, why am I reading a book, uh, a story that might have something to do with Advent when we're no longer in Advent? And of course, that is true, we're not. But there's something about this time that we're currently in that still feels a bit like Advent as we still wait. You know, we're still, we're not yet completely out of coronavirus. We've got the hope of vaccines and all of that, but we're still living under restrictions and isolation and all of that goes with that. And of course, in some ways as well, the church actually is still, or the world even, is still in a time of Advent when it comes to waiting for Christ coming again. The Advent season in the church year looks forward not just to Jesus coming as he did that first Christmas as a baby, but it looks forward to him. He comes again and we will know the coming of the kingdom of God in all its fullness. So in some ways, we're still in an Advent of sorts. We're certainly still in winter, in a time of darkness and of bareness and all that goes with that. So I'm going to read to you one of the stories from this book, which is called Chipmunk. And I'm just going to ask afterwards just to, for you just to reflect a little bit about what is God saying to you as you hear that story. I might just give a couple of small reflections on some of the things that I think God is saying to me through that story. But I'd encourage you to do some of your own reflecting too. The book is full of stories about animals and it's based, uh, well it's written by somebody who lives in the United States, so some of the animals that that, happen, that you get there you might not get here. But what the woman is talking about, what Gail Boss talks about, is about how we can learn so much about God as we look at nature and she's doing that as she looks at some of the animals in America and how they deal with winter and their own kind of advent. So here we go. Chipmunk. Here's a picture of him. In the sheltered south corner of my doorway, where the sun has kissed away the snow, I hear a chirp, 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 pointed as a metronome. Ticking items off some list, a chipmunk sits up tall on the warming cement slab. I try, peanut offering in hand, to ease the latch open soundlessly. But the chipmunk jerks, spins and vanishes down his hole. The cement slab is sinking on the side fronting the door, thanks to this burrower. His tunnel works clearly start at my door, but who can tell where they go from here? With four feet half the size of paper clips, he's dug down, maybe four or five times the length of his body, and out as far as his two-storey house is tall, though not that straight. Up in the wide, bright world this morning, he's taking what's apt to be his last sun bath for a while. Winter is about to settle in its cold bulk for a three-month stay, banishing the chipmunk to his basement. Unlike his cousins, squirrels at home in the trees, he would freeze above ground. Even in the insulated earth, he survives only by careful calculation. Compulsively, all four, he packed his cheek pouches with nuts and seeds and sped to rooms he'd hollowed out along the sides of his tunnel, pantries holding altogether up to a bushel of winter provisions. He keeps inventory, working for, for, for variety. If one sort of seed spoils, he wants plenty of other sorts. Such a well-stocked pantry, though, is a magnet for thieves in the beneath, and so above ground he stored more reserves, hiding them from hungry thieves there, too. He will keep up his gathering, his storying, his inventorying, 
above ground, below ground, relentless, never sure of enough, until finally the cold says, stop or die. Then he'll slip down through his tunnel to a leaf-lined chamber and, and ball up. His restless heart slows from 350 beats per minute to 15. He barely breathes. His body cools. If a weasel should find him, he will be dead before he knows what hit him. Awake, he can likely, es likely escape. So he sleeps in snatches. A few days, a couple of weeks, pulling himself up out of torpor to inspect the tunnel, the exits, the pantries, and to eat. If provisions seem low, he might pick a warm day and pop up briefly to raid a bird feeder or find one of his above-ground stashes which means risking a hawk or a cat watching for dark stripes against snow. So he considers staying put and saving food. But that gives the weasel better odds. All he has to consider, also he has to consider how long this winter might last and how to save food for spring, so he'll be strong enough to pursue a mate. A tiny master of risk assessment he calculates and recalculates all winter long. There's no formula, no group think to fall back on. Flexibility is all. Each chipmunk must, for and by himself, consider which of several choices will most likely bring him through the cold, dark days to the other side of winter strong. He must do this continually with no guarantees Today, heart beating fast, he makes today's choice. What's God saying to you through that story? Just very quickly, a couple of things that God's saying to me. We ended with that word choice. What are the choices that I make? Whilst we might at the moment be going through dark times in terms of COVID, we will come out of those, just as the spring will come for the chipmunk. But there will be more dark times that I go through in life, just as there will always be more dark times that you will go to. We can't always predict when they will be. But we can know that they will come because grief and pain comes to us all at times. And so one of the things that God's saying to me here is, what are the choices I'm making into how I can be sure I'm ready for those times in terms of sustaining my walk with him? Because during those times, that can often be when our faith is put under the most stress, when we can be most tempted in a way to let it go or to walk away because it all feels so hard. I wonder how your faith has borne up during this time of coronavirus. I wonder whether you have been prepared so that when it came and when it hit and when the isolation came, your faith remained strong because you had built up the resources to sustain you. One of the things that just struck me afresh as I read about the chipmunk was about the need for me in times when life is okay or manageable or good or joyful, whatever, is that I'm using those times to make sure I'm building myself up spiritually in a variety of ways. That was another thing that struck me about the chipmunk, the way he used a variety of seeds. What are the variety of ways that I use to build myself spiritually? Well, there's lots of things I do. Things I read, study the Bible, go out for walks, pray, have times of silence, all sorts of things, which I hope are all helping to build me so that when the winters come in my life, I will be able to survive them in terms of my faith. That, that those provisions I've made will carry me through so that those days in the winters when I find I may not be able to pray in the same way, That'll be okay because God 
and my faith in him will be strong enough to get through. I encourage you, even as we keep going through this current winter, I encourage you to continue to be building yourself, to be finding ways to ensure that you sustain yourself spiritually. I've said enough. I've gone on much longer than I usually would. So I'm going to leave you to reflect for yourself on that story. What was God saying to you?